Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to be talking about long division. This is maybe a review for some people, but we're going to look at long division when it has remainders and also when it has decimals. So that'll be fun. Um, the first thing is when we see a question like this, 153 divided by 9, we want to write it in this way. The first number goes on the inside and the second number goes on the outside. That's going to be a pattern that you see. Usually it will be a bigger number on the inside, but that's not always the case. Um, but you, what you want to do is put the first number on the inside, last number on the outside. And then we look at this outside number, 9 in this case. And we say 9, how many times does that go into, and we'll break this 153 apart and just Look at it in parts. First, we'll look at the hundreds. How many times does 9 go into 1? Well, 9 doesn't go into 1. 9 is bigger than 1. So we can't do anything with that. We're going to have to move on to the next number. How many times does 9 go into 15? See, 1, 5 right there. And that we can do. 9 goes into 15 one time. Right? So we have the 1 up top. And to find out what's left, what we'll do is we'll multiply 1 times 9 and that gives us 9, and then we subtract to find the difference. 15 minus 9 is 6, so what that's telling us is that 9 goes into 15 one time, and there's 6 left over. To find out the rest of this problem, what we need to do is bring the 3 down, and figure out again, 9, how many times does it go into 63? Well, 9 goes into 63 7 times, 7 times 9 actually is 63, so when we find out the difference, there's nothing left over. And that's actually a good thing. That means it's nice and even. 153 is, divided by 9 is 17, and that's our final answer. So whenever it works out to be a 0, there's no remaining parts left over, and we're done. That's our final answer. All right? So that's the solution to this problem using long division. Now let's do another question with long division to kind of show these same steps. We'll start with this number, 14. This is saying 85 divided by 14. We put the first number inside, the second number on the outside. And we'll look at this. How many times does 14 go into 8? Well, 14 can't go into 8. 14 is bigger than 8. So we'll move on to the next one. How many times does 14 go into 85? And for me, I just try and take a guess. And in this case, I'm going to guess, well, it'll be probably around like 5 or 6. So let's say 5. Now what I'm going to do is the same steps. I multiply 5 times 14 to see what's, what that gives me. That gives me 70. And when I subtract 85 minus 70, I get the result of 15. So 14 would go into 85 5 times with 15 left over. Now that doesn't really work because if, if there's, there's 15 left over, that can still go into 14. So what we're going to have to do is actually back up a step and make our guess just one number bigger. All right? Five didn't work this time because that number is larger than 14. But we're going to back it up and try guessing using just the number, um, yeah, one number bigger. Ah, six. So now we're looking at how many times does 14 go into 85? We've guessed it at 6 times. 6 times 14 will give us 84. And when we subtract, we end up with just 1 at the end. This is actually really good, because having 1 there means that 14 will go into 85 6 times, and then there'll be just 1 left over. If we're writing things with a remainder, that would be our answer, 6 with the remainder of 1 or in other words, it can be written as 6 remainder 1 or 6 R1. That's it. That would be our final answer if we were looking for this solution with a remainder. Now, if we're looking for this solution with decimals, it's going to add a couple of steps, and it's going to give us lots of practice at long division. So that's good. All right, let's take a look at what we do. If we're going to put a decimal there, we have to go until we end up with a 0 on the end here. So we put a decimal in both the top and the bottom, both inside and outside, and we just keep adding zeros, because adding zeros after this 85 does not change the value of it. Um, so we'll, we're just going to find more exactly how many times 14 goes into 85. 
So we'll start by adding a zero, and then we need to bring that down. We look over here and say 14. How many times does 14 go into 10? Well, 14 is bigger than 10. It doesn't go into 10. So we put a zero up top, and then we add another zero here and continue on. Bring the zero down. Now we're going to say how many times does 14 go into 100? And we'll put our response up here. We'll say 7. 7 times 14 is 98. We'll subtract 98. 100 minus 98 gives us 2. It's not a nice even number at the bottom, so we're going to add another 0 and continue on this process. Add a 0, bring it down. How many times does 14 go into 20? We'll put the number up there. It goes in one time. 1 times 14 is 14. 20 minus 14 equals 6. It's not 0. So we're going to have to continue adding a 0 bring it down, and on and on and on, following those same exact steps. It can take a long time. But basically, that's how we do long division. In this case, the decimal would continue on and on and on and on and on. So we're just going to stop at this point, showing that these are the steps to finding a solution for decimal. And you continue until you do subtraction and you have a nice zero at the end. All right? Like I said, this can take a long time and continue on for quite a while. But if it was just with a remainder, then we would have been done at the second step. So I hope that those two examples show us how to do a little bit of long division and also how to work with long division when it's not an even result. We'll sometimes have a remainder and we'll sometimes have a decimal. I hope this has been a good review for you and have a wonderful day.